Welcome again to another one of our health lectures and uh, we're dealing with nutrition and today we are with our third part on the nutrients that we need. We um, have been talking about uh, protein and carbohydrates and fats so far. And today we're going to start out with, um, with minerals. Now, this is also a subject that is quite important for us to understand because the minerals have to do with the alkalinity and acidity of our body. But let's go little by little and um, let me first tell you about the minerals that we distinguish in science or in nutritional science. They speak about essential minerals. And the essential minerals, they, uh, co they are considered 17 minerals to be essential. Now, as I told you before, essential really means that our body cannot produce them and that we always need to get these uh, nutrients from the outside. And um, so really, all, all minerals are really essential because we can't produce any of all these minerals that we have. And um, I don't know why they only talk about 17 essential minerals, because, um, see, we are made, according to the scriptures, we are made from the dirt out of the, from the dirt of the ground. And the dirt of the ground usually contains between 100 and, let's say, 115, 117 different minerals. So that's probably the amount of minerals that make up our body too. So why they only speak about 17 minerals, I don't really know. But these are broken down into micro minerals and in, uh, sorry, into macro minerals. Let's start with that and micro minerals. Now macro mi means big and micro means small. And the macro minerals are minerals that we need in more than 100 milligrams per day. Oh, I'm sorry, we need more than 1,000 milligrams per day. So the, no, that's not right. It is 100 milligrams per day. So one gram is 1,000 milligrams. So this would be one-tenth of a gram, and that would be considered to be a macro mineral. Now, the macro minerals, we also know them as electrolytes. You know about the drinks that they sell for sports people, drinks that contain, contain electrolytes. Now, these are mainly calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfite, and sodium. These are our electrolytes, and we need more than uh, 100, grams, uh, 100 milligrams per day of these minerals. Then we have the microminerals. There we need less than, 100 milli less than 100 milligrams per day, or is it? Uh, yes, that's correct. It's less than 100 milligrams per day. And uh, we need to really take care that we do get our minerals because without it, our body will not function very well. Uh, sadly enough, uh, uh, most people consider calcium to be the most important of the minerals in our body. And I don't think really that that's the most important one. It is probably the one that we have need of in the biggest quantity because usually we have around one kilo of calcium in our body, which is mainly also in our bones. But I consider magnesium to be the most important mineral because magnesium is like the teacher in a classroom. If one of the students is missing, but the teacher is there, we have a class. It's not complete, but we have a lecture. 
but the magnesium is like the teacher. So if that's not there, then nothing is really functioning. And uh, I believe that we really need to take care that we have enough magnesium. And uh, sadly enough, in our, uh, our foods nowadays, we don't really find uh, usually enough magnesium. So it's a good thing if we would uh, uh, take a little bit of extra magnesium. Uh, talking about this magnesium, uh, let me tell you that uh, really the uh, only magnesium that we can use in our body is magnesium chloride. And many times they sell magnesium sulfide, which we then have to first turn into magnesium chloride. And for elderly people, sometimes it's not that easy because they don't have a lot of chloride in their body because we use tremendous amounts of chloride for our digestion. So um, now let's have a look what these minerals do. Our weight is composed of 59 of 95 percent of gases and only 40 percent of minerals. So if we look at that we can easily find out why we bubble up so so uh, and blow up so easily because we are mainly made from gas. 95% we're gas and only 4% we are minerals. So if you increment a body of uh, let's say 150 pounds, you would only get about six pounds of ashes back because all the rest is gas. I presented that uh, one day in... Uh, uh, on the lecture, and uh, a young lady, she got all excited about it and said, uh, oh, now I know what happened to my mom. I thought that they had dumped half of her because they only gave me a little container with ashes back, and so I thought that couldn't be all of her. Yeah, well, that's all of her because it's just a little part of us that are minerals. <coughs> Sorry. So what do the minerals do in our body? Well, we said that already before. They are construction material. So our teeth and our, our bones are made from uh, minerals and our hemoglobin, the red part of our blood, is uh, uh, made, made from iron. So um, it's a construction material, but it's also a regulating material material. It regulates the acid and base in our body. And now this is a very, very important issue for us to understand because our health really depends on the relationship between acid and base in our body. If it is out of balance, we will get sick. And that's something that most people don't understand and we will be uh, speaking about this quite extensively still so that you understand why we get sick. We'll have a whole lecture on that one of these days. Now, if, uh, if a food, for example, is acid or alkaline, does not depend on its taste. Let's say, for example, the lemon. The lemon is very acidic if you taste it in your mouth, and yet it is very alkaline once it is digested because the acidity or alkalinity of a food depends on whether it contains more acid or more alkaline minerals. Now, the acid minerals are called acid, and the alkaline minerals are called base. So let's have a look here. We got uh, some uh, minerals here on the screen, like we have the alkaline minerals here. Some of them are calcium, magnesium, sodium, that's the one that's in the salt, and potassium. These are alkaline minerals. And then we have acidic minerals like phosphor, sulfite, or chloride. And of course, there are many, many more. But uh, it's important that we understand these difference. So, uh, because most of us nowadays get sick because of uh, a disbalance in the acid and base. Let's uh, 
let me mention here something that is fantastic to supply minerals in our body. Because um, the minerals in our body, uh, I believe we have like at least 110, 115 minerals, different minerals in our body. And uh, the most complete food to supply minerals for us is probably the wheatgrass juice. Wheatgrass juice has somewhere around 105, 106, uh, no, sorry, 95, 96, 97 minerals. So that's the, the, the food highest in minerals, in minerals that we know. So if you really want to supplement your body with minerals, I would suggest that you use some wheatgrass juice, but don't use more than two or three ounces a day because if not, you will detox so heavily that you will probably get nauseous and, and uh, get other kinds of problems. And um, so I believe it's very important that we understand the, uh, the, uh, the, the minerals for our acids and base uh, uh, content in the body and uh, to make sure that we become alkaline because most of us are living in a very acidic state. Then I want to go to our next nutrient, number five, and this would be the vitamins. Now, the vitamins are regulating, uh, is a regulating nutrients, and vitamins haven't really been known for all that long. We only know the vitamins so were discovered somewhere around the late 1930s, uh, 1940s, and uh, before that, remember the sailors, when they were on their sailing boats, they were getting sick from scurvy because they didn't have, get any vitamin C. They only had uh, dried meat and, uh, and uh, dried bread on board and some water. And that does not contain any, um, any these foods don't contain any vitamins. So the vitamins have like a catalytic uh, function in our body. They will speed up chemical reactions that uh, go on in our body and they regulate also the, the metabolism. They help convert carbohydrates and fats into energy. When we spoke about the carbohydrates, remember that we need uh, um, enzymes and we need vitamin B to digest the, uh, the carbohydrates. So they have to do with that, and they help in the formation of bones and tissues. For example, many people take uh, calcium supplements, and I must say that the calcium supplements that are usually sold in this country are supplements that I don't think they can work because they are made from either a ground-up coral, which is a kind of a rock, or like a bone structure, so I don't think that we can digest that, or it's made from chalk, and that we cannot digest it either. So most of the um, calcium that's sold out there doesn't do us any good because uh, we just can't uh, plain digest it, and the body has to see how he gets rid of these uh, substances. Now, the, uh, the only... Uh, calcium that we can use is calcium citrate, but that is, I have never seen it anywhere here in the country and I wouldn't even know where to get it. And I don't think that it's that important either to take any calcium in a supplement form. Uh, usually it's recommended for people that suffer from osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is a lack of minerals in the bones, there's no doubt about it. But if you take calcium now, there's no way that you will increase the calcium in your bones. It's just as if you would be eating a lot of protein. Will that increase your muscle mass? No, it won't because you can put your arm in a sling and keep it there and then you can eat two pounds of steak every day, but you will still lose all the muscles on your arm. They will reduce because the, uh, the, the muscles and our bones are only developed if we, 
if we use them, if we do exercise or we use them for work, because that's what they're for, made for. And so the only way that we can get, um, let's say, control osteoporosis would be through exercise. And we need to do to put a lot of, of weight on, uh, on our bones so that the body will feel sti stimulated to put to deposit the, the uh, calcium in the bones. And now we also need vitamin D. It's necessary because it will, um, it, it will do, a, it has the function to deposit the calcium in the bones. And vitamin D, most of us are, uh, are very deficient with vitamin D because we don't get enough sunlight. But there is really no food where we could get vitamin D from. Some people say, oh, well, you get it from cow's milk. Yeah, but you get it from cow's milk. Do you drink cow's milk raw, or is it uh, processed? Is it uh, pasteurized, so it has usually been heated up, and that vitamin D for sure is gone in there. It's not in there anymore. So the, really, the only uh, source of vitamin that D that we have comes from the sunlight, because once the sun uh, hits on our skin, the skin will immediately start to produce vitamin D. So if we, are, we have suffered from osteoporosis, we need to make sure that we get plenty of sunshine and uh, that we also do a lot of exercise in order to stimulate the body to uh, deposit the calcium in our bones. Um, they help in the forge, okay, the, uh, prevention of deficiencies. So vitamins are important for the, the prevention of uh, deficiencies. For example, in the Great Depression here in the United States, they, uh, people suffered a lot, lot from uh, pellagra and night blindness and beriberi sometimes too. And so these are all deficiency diseases that will occur if we don't get enough vitamins. But now with the vitamins, we have uh, another problem too because most people take plenty of vitamins. They say, oh, if little is good, uh, more must be better. Well, that's not really the case. And especially with, with vitamins, most of the vitamins that are sold in this country are organic but synthetic. They are organic synthetic um, vitamins and they do not work because our body will not accept uh, synthetic uh, vitamins as a food. He treats, he deals with them as a toxin. And so uh, instead of doing us as any good, they work as a toxin and uh, it is difficult for the body to get rid of these substances, especially if uh, the vitamins that we are taking are oil-soluble vitamins like A, D, or E, or K, these are all uh, oil uh, and, um, vitamins soluble in oil. Now, you take them, and they can be very toxic if you take them uh, artificially. Then we have the vitamin B and C group, and these are water soluble. And uh, there, it's a little bit easier for the body to get rid of them. But why would we want to spend money on things that don't do us any good anyway? And um, so I can only recommend you stay away from all these vitamin supplements. And uh, if you ever use a vitamin supplement, then make sure that on the label it says the plant source where it is made from. Because if not, better be sure that is, it is a synthetic vitamin. And even the very known brand names that we have here in the U.S., they are still artificial. And many times in these vitamins, we find uh, uh, alcohol in there or we can find caffeine in there because when you take this vitamin C pill, it won't really make you feel any different, but they want you to feel good, and so they put a little bit of caffeine in there. Then you take the pill and, oh man, it really makes, this vitamin C really makes me feel good. Well, it's not the vitamin C, it's the caffeine that's in there that makes you feel good. So be careful with these substances. Don't, um, don't waste your money on them. And 
instead of doing yourself a favor, you're doing yourself some harm. Now, which are good sources for vitamins? The best sources for vitamins are vegetables, fruits, and especially sprouts. We'll have a whole lecture on sprouts because they are so important as a source for vitamins. And also in whole grains, we will find vitamins. The problem with vitamins is that whenever we cook them, they will get destroyed. So you will only get the vitamins if you eat the foods raw. If you cook them, you will destroy them, except better carotene, which is uh, in uh, tomatoes and carrots. That one gets uh, not destroyed when you heat it. But all the rest, I know, uh, do get destroyed when you heat them up. And uh, so we need to take care that we eat enough raw foods and not only cooked foods so that... Um, that we will get these vitamins and not have to take any uh, supplements. Now, there is another group of um, um, nutrients that we need, and these are the enzymes. And there's a very interesting group, the enzymes. Look what they do to us. Enzymes are nutrient regulators, just like the vitamins, and they are catalysts involved in over 4,000 different biochemical reactions. And they accelerate these reactions sometimes by millions of times, serving us a lot of energy. Now, the enzymes, they will com convert complex carbohydrates They'll break them down and com convert them into simple carbohydrate molecules. And uh, the, the, um, the enzyme that does that is called amylase. And now we have the protease, which will do, which will do the same thing with proteins. It will cut the proteins into pieces and convert it into amino acids, which are the building stones for the, uh, for the proteins. And... Then for the fat digestion, we have lipase. And we have plenty of other um, enzymes that we need for digestion. But uh, I don't want to go into all of them. And uh, now the enzymes are also present in our cellular membranes. I think I mentioned that already in a lecture before. In our cell membranes, which is like a skin around a an orange, and these membranes, we have enzymes in there. And they will regulate, like doorkeepers, the entrance and exits of substances in and out of the cell. So they are very important because they are part of our immune system. Because they can avoid that germs get into our cells and will make us sick. And, uh, but they are not only in the cell membrane. They are also inside the cell itself because in each one of our cells, we have like a little reproduction going on, a little, like a little factories with all kinds of fancy things in there. Uh, just imagine like a car factory that has all these different assembly lines. And we have the same situation in our, each one of our cells. And these, uh, uh, these enzymes... They are the workers in there. They carry materials around in our cells. Now, what are sources for enzymes? We will find enzymes in greens, in fruits, and also in other vegetables, and in raw sprouts. The, pr the body produces enzymes at a high price of energy. It it's very difficult for us to produce enzymes. Now, we can produce all the enzymes that we need, but it's uh, at the expense of a lot of energy. And enzymes have the same problem as the vitamins. vitamins. They will get destroyed if we heat something up. So if you eat, for example, cooked greens, there will be no enzymes in them anymore. Or if you should think about cooking your sprouts, that you have, you will definitely destroy the enzymes. Now, 
why is it so important to uh, treat our enzymes well? You see, when we eat three cooked meals, then we have to produce all the enzymes to break down the nutrients in, that, in these three meals. And the energy that we need for that is equivalent to eight hours of forced labor. Now, forced labor is not house cleaning. Forced labor is like pushing wheelbarrows full of sand or, or mixing concrete by hand or something like that. That's forced labor. And no matter how old we are, whether we are uh, one year old or 100 year old, we always need the same energy to digest three meals, cooked meals a day. And the problem also is that if we eat all this cooked food, then we have to produce so many enzymes that the body does not have the energy anymore to produce enzymes for other functions, like, for example, the enzymes that we need within our cells to carry around materials, or the enzymes that we need in our cell membranes to keep us protected. So we do want to take care that we hopefully do not get more than 25% of our food cooked and 75% of our food should be raw because if it is raw, it would be much easier to digest because we don't have to produce all these digestive enzymes. And we will also um, receive the, the, the vitamins that will not be destroyed if we eat our fruits and vegetables uh, fresh. So these, so far to our vitamins and uh, enzymes. Let me see what else I need to tell you about the enzymes. Um, well, I think I mostly cover it, covered it uh, pretty well. So let's just remember that in order to preserve enzymes, we should be eating 75% of our food raw and only 25% of our food cooked. Because if we waste the, the enzymes, if we run low on enzymes in our body because we have to produce all these digestive enzymes, then we will be aging very fast. And a good supply of enzymes is a has a juvenating effect on our body. Well, we'll get now to the sevens of the nutrients, and that is the fiber. Now, many technicians, many nutritions, nutritionists do not consider a fiber a nutrient because the fiber is really not something that we can completely digest and absorb. So we cannot absorb fiber, but yet we need the fiber. So what then is the function of the fiber? The fiber is very important. It has like a cleansing effect on our digestive system. When we eat foods that contain a lot of fiber, then the, our intestines make a movement just almost like a snake. They go like in waves, just like these, and it's called the peristalsis. And, the, and with these peristalsis, with this movement that the intestines make, they will move the content on the inside, they will move it to the end, to the exit of our body. But if we do not have enough uh, fiber in the body, in, in our food, then this food becomes like kind of slippery, and the bowels will move, but the content will not be moved to the, uh, to, towards the exit because the bowels will kind of slide on top of it. And um, so when that happens, then the foods can stay for days in our, in our digestive system. Of course, mainly in our intestines because that's where they would stay. Now, we have a need of about 36 grams of fiber a day. If we got this amount of fiber, 
then we do not have to worry because what I eat right now, within 24 hours, it would be leaving my body. But if I get less fiber, like for example, the American, the standard American diet only contains about 14 gram of fiber. Now that's roughly one third of what is needed. And if we get that little fiber, then the food cannot be moved through our intestinal tract and uh, it, will, it might take even up to four days and sometimes longer for the intestines to get rid of the food that we have eaten. Now, we will find plenty of fiber in uh, whole grains, in vegetables, also in fruits, in all these areas, also in, uh, in nuts. Almost all the natural foods contain quite a bit of fiber. What does not contain any fiber are the animal products. And the problem is that most of us eat just a lot of animal products. Animal products contain zero fiber. There's absolutely nothing in it. So now imagine that you ate a big steak dinner with very little fiber. That steak might sit in your intestinal tract for maybe up to four days. Can you imagine what's going to happen in your a digestive system, because you will not have a digestion there anymore. You're going to have a putrefication, and it will produce just a tremendous amount of toxins. And, uh, you know, toxins are really something that we need to be concerned about, because uh, we get toxins everywhere and with almost everything, whether it's the air that we breathe in, or the water we drink, or the food we eat, Everything nowadays contains toxins, so we definitely don't want to produce any more toxins in our uh, body than what we have to, uh, than what we have to. Good, now with these enzymes, uh, sorry, with the fiber, we need to understand that there are two different kinds of fiber. And this issue is quite important because um, it has to do with the digestion, and we will also get back to is this issue at a later point. We uh, have fiber that is insoluble in water, and this fiber, we will find it in whole grains and in uh, vegetables. That's where we find water-insoluble fiber. And then we have the water-soluble fiber, which, is, uh, which we'll find mainly in fruits and some fruity vegetables. So let's just remember that there are two kinds of fiber, and uh, there is a water-insoluble fiber and a water-soluble fiber. And when we talk about the compatibility of the different foods, which means the different foods that we can mix together, we can eat together, then uh, we, uh, we will come back to this issue here. And so I just would like you to remember this. And I also want to, you to remember that no animal product contains fiber. There is a good way of receiving fiber if you eat... Uh, natural foods like salads and greens and all these things, you'll have plenty of fiber in there. And if you eat them raw, it's even better because then you will get the fiber raw. Also, in uh, whole grains, we'll find a lot of fiber in there. And um, I think uh, this is so far what we need to know about the fibers and... Um, like I said, we'll get at another point, we will get to, the, um, to, the, to a lecture where we will learn how, how these content of fibers will affect the, the foods that we can mix and cannot mix together. And I think uh, we are done for the moment with our nutrients that we need. And I would like to uh, sum up a little bit what we have studied in these uh, last three lectures on nutrition and the nutrients that we need. Let's just remember, we started with the protein, 
And the important part with the protein is that we want to get not too much. Make sure we don't get too much protein, but that we get as little protein as possible. Then we spoke about the carbohydrates. The important part with the carbohydrates is that if we use wholesome carbohydrates, that they will not make us in any way uh, overweight, that the overweight comes from acidity and toxins, but not from overeating um, carbohydrates, because the body will always use them up. So then we spoke about the fats, and we want to remember there two or three very important things. One is that Every extracted fat is bad news because it will be digested in the upper part of our intestinal tract, will go into the blood and make our blood sticky. The other thing is that we don't want to use never fat that has been heated up. We don't want to cook with fat if you or oil. If you cannot resist using oil, then please put it on your food after you cooked it, but not before. And the only fat that we want to use, the only oils that we want to use are cold press oils. We want to stay away from the saturated fat, fats because they produce uh, cardiovascular problems. And we want to stay away from hydrogenated fats because we cannot digest them, we cannot metabolize them, let's say that way. And uh, they are just like uh, eating uh, a piece of margarine that has been hydrogenated, you can just as well eat some, uh, some uh, shoe polish or a piece of plastic. Uh, you will just digest that stuff just as well as margarine that has been hydrogenated. And then we spoke about the minerals. We know that the minerals are uh, important for keeping us acid or alkaline. Let's remember that. And then we spoke about the vitamins. We want to avoid the synthetic vitamins. Hopefully we won't use any additional uh, vitamins anyway. If we get wholesome fruits and vegetables and uh, grains, we will get all the vitamins that we need. And then we spoke about the, um, the enzymes. We need to be careful with the way that we uh, use up the enzymes in our body so that we will not uh, lower the enzyme content in our body because that would make us old, uh, would uh, make us age. So we want to be careful with that. And then we spoke finally about the fiber and the fiber, we need to get a good amount of it so that our intestinal tract can function properly. Now, with all this, uh, with these fiber, let me just add one more thing to it here. Because, you know, our foods that we buy nowadays in the supermarket or wherever we get them, the foods nowadays have been produced on grounds, on soil that has been depleted in nutrients because we have harvested and harvested over and over again. And with all the nutrients, all the minerals that are in the ground, the farmer replaces only about three of them, which is nitrogen, phosphor, and potassium. That's usually all he puts back into the ground. So all the rest is depleted. Also, we produce uh, uh, crops now that have been genetically engineered, so they will grow very, very fast because the, fa the farmer <coughs> only gets paid for uh, quantity. He does not get f paid for quality, so he couldn't care less whether there are nutrients in the foods or not. And there are no nutrients or very little nutrients in these foods nowadays. And um, then the other thing is that we will harvest, or farmers will usually harvest all the crops quite green so that they have a long shelf life. For example, tomatoes, sometimes they keep them in a, in a warehouse for 
up to a year, and they keep them with gases in there so that they will, uh, will be metabolically, they will be dead. There's no metabolic function in the tomato. The same thing, they can, they can keep apples and uh, other fruits like that. And uh, so in all these processes, uh, we lose a lot of nutrients. And then things get transported pretty far sometimes because in the winter in New York, for example, well, there is no production of any lettuce or any greens. So they come out from Mexico or from California or, or even from South America, wherever they bring all these things in. They have been on the truck, on the plane, in the warehouse for days and days, and they have lost plenty of nutrients. So the foods that we eat nowadays usually don't contain more than 50% of the nutrients that our foods had about 50, 60 years ago. So now, our, the capacity in our uh, stomach is limited. So we can say, all right, so the foods only have 50% of the nutrients that they had 60 years ago, so now I'm going to eat double of the food. Well, we can't because it just won't fit in our stomach. So, even though it's true that we need to eat a, a, a sufficient amount of fiber, and that's why I say let's have some good salads and, and hold some grains and everything, but we need to make some juices. That's what I recommend. I always recommend make some green juices. Don't make that much uh, fruit juices because they are not very alkaline. Make some green juices from veg green leafy vegetables, carrots, things like that. But then don't mix carrots with red beets because it's both sweet juices. And uh, um, if you make, want to make a good juice, make it may be 50% carrot juice and the other 50% from green leafy vegetables. And then you mix that together and you drink that. Now, the advantage that we have there is if you take, for example, if you want to drink, let's say, maybe uh, a quarter and a half of green juices a day, then you might need somewhere around four pounds of, uh, of carrots to make these uh, three pints of uh, carrot juice. And then you might need uh, a, a head of... Um, romaine lettuce, and you can also turn that into juice, and uh, it would give you probably around three pints too, and then you have six pints, what would be a quart and a half, and now you, drink, you can drink that. Now a quart and a half, you can easily drink that during a day, but if you would try to eat on top of all the food that you have eaten already, you wanted to eat on top of that, uh, four pounds or five pounds of carrots and a whole head of uh, romaine lettuce, you would not be able to get that into your, into your stomach because the capacity is uh, really reduced. And that's why I always recommend that under the situation right now with all these depleted foods, depleted in nutrients, let's try to have some green juices. But we will also be speaking about this a little bit more extensive in another lecture. I will tell you how to make them and, and I will tell you how to use them, when to drink them, because you can't drink them with your meals. And so we will give you all these reasons later on then. So um, <clears throat> I think we have covered quite a bit in, in these uh, lectures of nutrition. And uh, I would like to uh, finish here, wrap up here. And, and um, the next step that I would like to do is I uh, would like to have a look with you at where we get the best nutrients. Because you've seen on this picture that I had here at the beginning with where we have the meat and the, and the chickens and, and the eggs and the vegetables and all these things. So we have these different groups of, uh, of uh, uh, foods. We have the vegetable kingdom and we have the uh, plant king, uh, the, the, uh, the animal kingdom. And we really need to have a look at this and see where do we get 
the best nutrients. Where do we want to go for the nutrients that we now know that we need? And to get them also in the quantity and in the quality that we need, because all these things are important. And uh, when I talk about quantity, I'm not talking about weighing everything out. I'm not talking about counting calories. I don't think we should do all these things. It's absolutely unnecessary. If we eat natural foods the way God has made them, we will get everything we need. And of course, man has depleted the, the nutritional content in the foods, so we can drink some concentrated juices to make up for the nutrients that are not anymore in the foods that we are eating. And if we do that, we will live a very uh, relaxed life. We don't have to be under stress. We don't need to be thinking, oh, is this good or is this bad? Do I lack something? Do I, should I get something? We don't, have to need, we don't need to think about all these things because it's pretty easy. God has made things difficult for us. He has given us the, the foods. He has produ produced these nice little packages of love, like I call them, like uh, 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 a fruit, let's say, an orange. It's a package of love he has made. He has put uh, fiber in there and carbohydrates in there. He has put some water in there, some minerals, some vitamins and enzymes. And the whole game, everything is in there. Friends, let's just use them naturally and not take them to the factory where they will tear all these uh, nutrients apart and destroy good part of them and then give us uh, a depleted food back. So let's eat things naturally and we will be in good health. We won't have to spend money on, uh, on these uh, supplements, uh, vitamin or mineral supplements or whatever uh, you're using out there. We don't need that. And I don't also believe, either believe that uh, uh, taking like herbal supplements, that that does us very much good because they might have some certain advantages, but most of it is more business than really health. So let's focus on the uh, important issues. Let's eat natural foods and, uh, and let's just be happy and healthy because it is possible. But we need to keep studying. We need to know how to treat this body wisely. Just like a mechanic doesn't become a mechanic in two days, it's a study. You have to study the car, and if you want to take care of this body, you have to study the body, and you need to know what this body needs. You have to know how to cleanse it from the inside and from the outside. You have to know how to nourish it and uh, how to give it the necessary rest and, and all the other laws of health that are involved to keep us healthy and happy. So I hope to see you again soon, and uh, I'm, uh, I will uh, finish this uh, nutritional lecture, and the next one will be then on uh, the origin of the nutrients that we need. <music>